So how does the UCC do this? The goods must be in existence and identified. So identification becomes our first point on slide three. Can the buyer identify the goods? If the goods are in existence, or if there's some type of number series that identifies them, and they're set aside, then the buyer can insure against any harm that might come to them. Even if the goods are in the seller's warehouse or on the seller's cargo vessel, it wouldn't matter. The buyer has the right to get insurance for the loss. Let's move to a different topic. We read next about risk of loss. Whose risk is it when the goods are shipped through the hands of a carrier? If the goods are damaged in transit, does the buyer suffer the loss or the seller? On slide five, we understand that the buyer can pick up the goods at the seller's back door. No carrier is, is needed. Uh, the seller can physically uh, release the goods or make the goods available to the buyer, but until he does so, the risk of harm falls on the seller. However, with large items or distant buyers, it is very common to employ a shipping agent or a carrier to ship and move the goods. So we're going to draw some arrows to indicate the direction of movement with regard to shipment and destination contracts, which we'll then learn about. A shipment contract is where the seller ships the goods and no longer has a risk. All of the uh, risk, including the title, confers to the buyer at the point when the seller puts the goods in the hands of a carrier. So we can literally draw a line here to indicate this is a shipment contract. Destination contracts are the opposite. We draw a line here. It is where the, basically the seller remains responsible for the loss even though the goods are in the carrier's hands. So until the goods get to the destination, or the buyer's destination, or wherever the buyer states, the, the, uh, the title and risk of loss do not pass to the buyer. So let's remember, the buyer does have an insurable interest, even though he may not have what title or, or any type of other, or the other issue, such as possession. So shipment contracts, we draw the line here. Destination, we draw it here. Uh, I have for you a P, two PNGs on, with this illustration on it. If this is not readable on the video, please refer to them and use this uh, uh, the stick figure uh, illustration to help you understand, especially when you're facing questions on quizzes about whether or not the seller has the risk or the buyer has the risk for any loss in the hands uh, of, the, of the carrier. So let's remove, remove, let's move to slide six and briefly discuss the nature of a document of title. And we'll use a warehouser's receipt as our example. And later we'll return to this scenario when we're discussing negotiability in another chapter. Consider that a seller delivers ceiling fans, for instance, to a warehouse and the warehouser issues a piece of paper or a document of title and we'll call it a warehouser's receipt. It's important to store a large volume of goods uh, in a warehouse since you don't have to move them to sell them. Uh, so we'll sell the piece of paper. Let's move that piece of paper and not the heavy, bulky items. The warehouser provides this legal document of title. And if the DOT is limited to me, only I can retrieve the goods from the warehouse. But if the DOT is a negotiable warehouse receipt, then anybody who has the piece of paper can retrieve the goods from the warehouser. So in this case, let's say that we have a negotiable warehouse receipt, which the seller can sell to any buyer and the buyer can sell to any other buyer. A negotiable warehouse receipt allows whoever owns the piece of paper, a holder in interest or a holder in due interest, to retrieve those items from the warehouse. Therefore, the, if the buyer wishes to sell the paper and not retrieve the ceiling fans, uh, the next buyer can likewise sell the paper and so on and so on. As long as each person in the link of chain makes money, the document of title has value. By the way, if moving paper to make money appeals to you, this is called moving paper or commercial paper, you should then study a subject as your business major in finance. Study finance if you're interested in commercial paper. Negotiability is the key that we're speaking of, though. You're making money simply moving paper after you've conducted market and financial research. 
Thus, with a document of title, the seller can transfer ownership to a buyer, buyer via the paper, commercial paper. What is the risk of loss? Well, very little in a way because the goods don't change possession in a physical movement. They stay in place in a warehouse. But let's return to when goods move in shipment and talk about some of these terms we have for a third-party carrier carrying the goods. Look at slide 8 and 9, and we'll use some examples. On 9, we see terms such as free on board, free alongside, CIF, and delivery X ship. Some of these are merchant marine terms, such as free alongside or delivery X ship, where the goods travel by water. However, when you order something through Amazon and UPS delivers it, that is CIF. In the vernacular, that's called shipping and handling. But in terms of business and industry with regard to carriers, it is called CIF. And in CIF, the buyer pays for the cost of an item, the insurance, and the freight, but the seller arranges it all. The seller puts the goods in the hands of a carrier and he's done with it. A line is drawn after the seller, uh, after the goods leave the seller. So that would be what? A de destination or a shipment contract? Remember, the seller ships CIF to benefit the seller's interest. He no longer has to deal with the goods. Thus, we have a line here and call it a shipment contract because once the goods are in the hands of the carrier, the seller no longer has risk or liability.